Welcome to part two of the Pillar Maintenance Project. <laughs> I'm out here just putzing along. I wrote, I didn't grab the camera and do an intro or anything. I don't even have Kaylee on camera. She's around here somewhere. Uh, let's see here. So far, I've gotten the first two pillars out here, and I went ahead and drug the gates out. So I can get my spacing and I'm sitting here looking at the pillars which one is it I think yeah it's this one over here remember I mentioned at the start of the last vlog Kaylee had, went through a foam fetish for a while and here see, it helps I get out of the way but you can see where the foam's been tore up and we've just painted over the top of it I need to cut the foam off right about here carve a new piece to go in there to fix it and I'll probably do both sides and then this bottom here needs to be touched up too the only thing good on the bottom is the back piece so I've got about three sides I need to fix up and I might just say hell with it try to clean this up here and I'll just repaint it that way I'm not having to do a whole lot of carving uh, this one here has a couple broken pieces of foam here and there. The paint's kind of getting scratched up, marred up on it, and what have you. So it just needs to be repainted. I do have some damage clear down here at the bottom there on the foam. I'm not going to worry about that. I'll give it a shot of paint. People really won't notice that. They do notice this corner here, though. <laughs> <laughs> I had some comments on it last year. So we need to do that. And then the next thing I need to do is I need to get the arches out here. You can see here my old brackets. This is where I had the uh, old arches mounted onto the top of them. And I want to keep the mountain points about the same. But I need to get my new arches out here, get them up here, and get them centered and see if the uh, brackets are going to work. Uh, the reason why I want to try to put the brackets in the same spot is because the skeletons that fit on top of the uh, pillars, uh, the plywood base go underneath the arches and they're notched out for it. <laughs> but uh, anyway, I've got to get the brackets figured out on the entrance and the exit arch. And I can use this setup for that because it, I can mirror, mirror it on the other set of pillars. Huh? Uh, we got the arches mark, marked. What I ended up doing is I ended up using a sharpie and I put a piece of tape across the back here. It has a ledger board because uh, the black sharpie won't show up on black paint very easily. So uh, anyway, this mark here is the uh, outside edge of the pillar and this mark here is where the uh, the mounting bar will go. And once I figure out what size bar I can do, I can measure off that line and I put a corresponding mark here on the towers out there and I can you know that way that way everything will line up and the marks on here correspond with the marks on the other arch too so I can mix the pillars up you know I don't have to worry about getting the same two pillars with the other two pillars but now that these are done I'm going to set these off to the side I'm not ready to worry about mounting bars or mounting brackets yet and we got to get the gates off the pillars, those two, and we'll get those two in here and we'll start getting the work done on them. Uh, well, we got one into the shop. Uh, as you can see here, I've got some paint damage here and there. And it's just normal wear and tear. Now, I covered the foam down below where all the damage is here and on the other corner. So I've got three sides here. I'm going to probably cut the foam off right about here on you know, this grout line and I'll replace from down here which means I just got some sm three small pieces to carve. Uh, once those get carved I get them reattached, they'll get primer and I'll come back through and I'll do touch up paint and get those painted as well. That's project number one. Project number two is this trash bag here. Uh, but originally when I made this I went through the inside from the lip down and I treated it with a sealant to a water seal it. Uh, my thought was is I wanted to fill these towers halfway up with water 
so they wouldn't blow over. Uh, come to find out my water sealing didn't do as good as I had hoped and they all leaked. So instead of tearing everything apart and redoing it, we just put a trash bag in each tower, stapled it onto the lip here, and then filled the trash bag with water. And that's worked perfect so far. Except I have one of the towers that leaks. <laughs> so the bag needs to be replaced. Well, the bags are two years old now. So I'm going to tear the bags out of these and I'm going to put new bags in. Up here, this bracket here is where I uh, attach the uh, old arches to. Uh, I'm going to redo that a little bit. Uh, if it got real windy, this 2x2 two two here wants to rotate, which means the arches kind of flip-flop back and forth. So I think I'm going to do is I'm going to put another 2x2 two two down here and then run a brace through it, you know, in between them to mount the uh, mounting bracket on. And I've got to move it too. The old mounting bracket for the old arches needs to be over to about here for the new ones. Okay, this is the first pillar. We've gotten in here. I've gotten the foam cut, not, cut off the bottom. Got it over here so I can get my measurements and stuff for the replacement pieces. Then we've gone, get this turn here, inside. And I've put in a mounting bracket for the arch, which will run down the center of that 2x4. Two, uh, two it's mounted in there. And I went ahead and made up three more while I was at it for the other pillars. So that will speed things up. And then I just got put done putting a new liner in the cavity here. So for right now, this pillar is as done as I'm going to get. I still need to carve the foam for it. And I figure instead of doing it pillar by pillar, I'm going to go through all the pillars first and see just how much foam I need to carve and then carve it all at once and then we'll get in and get them all painted. Now, I do have one, another thing I've decided to do. I've gotten, the, gotten look, to looking at this and there's a lot of scratch marks and stuff scattered all over on all sides of, of this pillar. I think the other pillars are just as bad. Uh, touching them up is going to take just as long as if I went through and repainted them. So I think what I'm going to end up doing is after I get the foam attached to this one and all the other towers maintenance, we're going to go through and repaint the whole towers. All of them. Or just a fresh brand new coat of paint, which is probably going to add a day or two on to the project. I'm working on pillar number three. I've got two there done. So far, it looks by the looks of it, I've looked at all four of the pillars, the two for the entrance, two for the exit, and there's only going to be that first pillar that needs foam recarved on it. All the others, like that there, that's where the uh, bracket for my uh, hinge for the uh, gate goes. So I'm not going to do anything about that, but I got some lines here where it's been hit with a weed eater, and I got one corner here that Kaylee chewed on. This is at the very bottom of the tower. This crack from the weed eaters I can fill in with a paintable silicone caulking. Fill it in to bring it back up level and then just repaint. This here I think I'm just going to paint it. I'm not going to you know just replace the foam down here on such a small area and being that it's the bottom of the uh, you know bottom of the pillar if I get some paint in there, no one's even going to notice it. I mean, no one's going to be walk, uh, crawling around on the ground with their head down to the ground looking at the bottom of wall panels. Uh, I take that back. That could happen. You never know. Some people get anal. But, uh, so I'm just going to leave it. Uh, but, like with these two, minus the foam, I've done the uh, bracket. Where is it? Ah, over here for the uh, entrance well, for the entrance pillar. Same thing with that. I've replaced the bags in them. Uh, done a little bit of clean up. What have you on. Those two right now are ready for paint. That one's ready to have its foam carved in. It will be ready for paint. This one, I still get, need to get the mounting bracket in there and the bag replaced. And I've got one more out on the uh, driveway. I need to do the same thing with. Uh, since we've got all the other maintenance done on the towers, I've moved along to the one that had the damage on the bottom from Kaylee and I've laid out the pattern again on some scrap foam. I have plenty of it up there. 
So now that the pattern is laid out, I'm going to take my Dremel. We're going to recarve these three pieces. Now what I'm going to end up doing after I get them carved, I also heat treated them with some water in my heat gun on the originals over there. I'm going to wait until after I get these glued on to the pillar to come back and do my heat treatment on it. Now as to the Dremel, which is what I use for doing all my carving, I have a grout removal bit in here. That's what I use for all my carving. I find with that bit, I can get into small spots and stuff a lot easier. You know, if I'm doing something intricate, you know, intricate pattern. But it gives me the same look across the board instead of using multiple bits. It takes a little bit longer when you're doing bigger sheets with that because the blade is smaller. But that's what I use for carving. Uh, being 4th of July today, we're having a barbecue. I think I'll have enough time to get in here and get those carved and hopefully attached to the pillars. Before we start barbecuing, I'll give me a chance to clean up and de-snow. Well, not too bad for a couple hours work. Took eh, about two and a half hours. All together, we got the foam cut down, we got it carved, and we've got it adhered to the pillar. It's not an exact match to the original pattern, but it's close enough that it should blend right on in. Now, I've got some screws with washers on here holding the pieces into place until the glue dries, and we're using Gorilla Glue on this. So that means I'm stuck, I can't go any further today until it dries. So tomorrow, we'll come out, we'll get the uh, screws all popped out of it, we'll get the heat gun and the spray bottle out, we'll go through and get it heat treated, so it matches this up here. Probably do a little bit of sanding on it too. And then uh, probably, hopefully, get the primer coat done on it tomorrow. Well, these are dried, they've set overnight, and I just got done heat treating them. Now it's time to move into paint on all the pillars. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to give each pillar uh, one coat of uh, white to act as a primer and a sealant. Uh, I'm not going to do two coats. I'm not worried about the old colors bleeding through. Uh, the gray is going to stay the same color. The face of the bricks are going to stay the same color. So if they bleed through, they bleed through. It's not going to hurt anything. What is going to change, I decided to do a, uh, a little bit of a color change, is the uh, damaged areas. When I originally painted these, the surface was a light red and the damaged areas were a darker red. And unless you're looking really close, you can't really tell the difference <laughs> between the two shades. Uh, so what I think I'm going to do is I want the damaged areas to stand out more. And I've done this on my uh, water walls. It does help the damage area stand out more. I am going to change it to a tree frog green. It's kind of a lime colored green. Uh, and then we'll do the face of the brick as the same. And do all the, all the colors the same. And I might change the field in here on the plaques too. I haven't gotten that far yet. Okay, what turned out to be a semi straightforward project just got harder thanks to Sue the aka the set dresser <laughs> I got them all sprayed white they've got to dry and I gotta come back through and do the damaged areas now I originally met man or uh, originally vlog I was going to follow pretty much the same color scheme with the red face on the bricks the gray on the grout lines and the border and the medallions were going to be the same. I was just going to do the damaged areas, change the color on the damaged area. And see, I got a can of it here. Tree frog green. That's what's going in the damaged areas. I'd already made up my mind. <coughs> and I was working on spraying that pillar. Sue comes out with the phone. Hey, Mike, phone call. <laughs> so I had to stop and took my phone call. She pipes off with, ooh, I like that. 
I did my phone call, came out, finished from spraying. I just had her come out and I had her explain what she was talking about. She likes the white brick. <laughs> I'm going to follow the same color scheme as the other one. Grays, you know, with changing the thing. Uh, we've decided, so we can talk me into it. Face of the brick is going to be white. <laughs> so I won't have to do red. I will have to, after I get the green on, I'm going to have to go through and uh, do uh, several coats of white over the top of it to cover that up. So we're going to be changing that, which is going to add to the uh, build a little bit. And then, you know, what I've seen a lot of you guys out there have done pillars. Small ones, big ones, large ones. I've seen you do red brick with plaster or just with red brick. Some with clean brick, some with damaged brick. All of it red. I don't think I've ever seen anyone do white brick before. So this may be a first. I don't know. I'm pretty sure there's someone out there with white brick, and I just haven't seen pictures of it. But, uh, major color change. We're going to do the damaged areas in green, and the face of the bricks are going to be white. Well, I started Thursday, went out of town Friday for work, got back into town last night, and it's Monday. And so far, we've got the primer, done, primer coat done on them, which was in white. And I believe last segment I talked to you about uh, what Sue Ann said about doing uh, the white brick and we decided to go with white brick uh so what i've done is today i came out here got all the green sprayed for the damaged areas and then i got my uh, roller out and went over lightly with a roller to clean it up so now the bricks look like they've been damaged and i just got done rolling the white so these are gonna have to i'm gonna let these sit overnight and let everything cure real good i did run into a couple of problems I started at the top and worked my way down and up here at the top I didn't have the I was either pressing a bit too hard or the uh, roller wasn't quite level but if you notice here the damaged area is really well defined up here I got white paint in the damaged area so instead of getting my air sprayer out when I go to do my next color I'll get the green out and I'll do a couple touch-ups possibly here and there there's only a couple of bricks on each of them that need need to touch up but uh, as far as next color, it's going to be the grout lines. You know, Sue Ann's saying, leave it as it is. You know, when you do painted brick, the grout lines are painted white too. And I don't want that. I want the grout lines to pop. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to repaint all the grout lines gray. And then we were talking on the plaques here, what to do with the plaques. And I think we're going to do the, the uh, trim here all the way around in gray. Do the field here in brass. And then uh, blue, yellow and blue, which is what we did here on uh, the shield. Wolfie and black. And then over here, it will be brass on the field. And then we'll do the lettering in black or silver or something like that. Well, since I can't do anything on the tower and I've still got some time to kill the day, you know, we gotta wait for the paint to dry. I don't wanna wait till tomorrow to do anything. I want the paint to set up good. I figure it'd be a good time to come in here downstairs into the indoor Dragon's Lair workshop. I haven't used that name in a while. And continue to work on the entrance and the exit arch. But what I've got to do is I've got these here. I bought a string of C9 sockets. These uh, came in a string of 50 and the sockets were one foot apart. And I've got them a lot closer than that on the sign. And I didn't want all the extra wire bundled up in the back. So I snipped them. And what I'm going to do is from I've got it on the front side now. But from the back side I'm going to insert the socket in and then fill it with uh, silicone caulking to hold it into place. And then after they dry, I can, you know, reattach the wires, shorten them up and reattach wires and solder them. It's a little bit more work, but it's worth it in the long run. Now, my first step in order to do this is I'm going to take some masking tape. And I'm going to go through and cover the outs the front side 
of all the holes. That way when I push this in and put the silicone in, the uh, silicone doesn't poof out the front end and leave me with a goddamn mess. <laughs> well, I got the sockets installed on both sides. I did a design change on them, though. I was going to adhere them to the, uh, to the sign, the sockets to the sign with uh, silicone caulking. And I said, the hell with it, and used hot glue instead. Now, I could go another step, too, after I get all the wiring and stuff attached, and I could do a strap across here to help hold it in and attach it with a couple of screws. But I'll do that if the hot glue starts to release and what have you on it. Uh, right now, you can see the sockets there. They're just about flush mount on there so that'll be perfect. I can screw my bulbs in and stuff. For right now I'm done with these tonight. I got some other things I need to attend to. Uh, but our next step is I need to get the wires clipped and put in to get uh, put together. Go around each one, get the power cord on. I need to do both signs. And then we can try plugging these in and see if they work. Oh well, we got one pillar done with the gray. That took about two hours to do the whole pillar with all the uh, grout lines. And then I also went through on a lot of the green and touched them up here and there where they needed it. I left some spots untouched up. But now I've got one, two, three more to do. I'm not going to get these all done today. <laughs> They'll be done tomorrow. I hope. Because tomorrow is a busy day. But, we've got to start on it. The only thing I have left to do on that pillar there is the uh, plate where it says Antal, Anton Thrall's Traveling Menagerie. i got to get that painted. And it'll be like that on all the other pillars too. Right now it's just getting in, touching up the green, and doing the gray. Well, it's Wednesday, and the last day for me this week. Normally I have Monday through Thursday off to work on Halloween stuff. This week, we've got Kent Cornucopia Street Festival. We leave tomorrow. It's a three-day festival. So we got to leave tomorrow, Thursday. So I'm shy a day for building this week. But we've definitely made some progress on the pillars. They've had the white, the green, and the gray sprayed on them. The only thing left to paint now are the medallions or the plaques on each of the pillars and we'll do that Monday <laughs> ain't gonna have time it's going on 8 o'clock here p.m. I'm calling it quits I got a ton of stuff in the house I stayed out here a little bit later than I normally do and pushed it to get that pillar done progress made we're back out in the shop after our long weekend it's Monday last segment I believe was last Wednesday I don't know I'll have to check the camera Anyway, we're making progress. We're damn near done with the pillars. I just got done coming in here, and we got the brass on both of those, and we touched up the gray border around it. Needed a little bit of touch up. And then over on this one, we got the brass in, touched up the gray, and we got the wolf, wolfy emblem taken care of. And I just finished doing this one. Now, the only thing I've got left to do on the pillars themselves I got to get the shield, shield on this one and that one painted. And I got to come in here and do the lettering on both of these plaques. Now we've got roughly about 100 degrees here. It ain't going to take long for the paint to dry. So I could go in the house, cool down, come back out later today, have these done. I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to call it quits out here for the day. I'm going to go into the house, into the mini Dragon's Lair workshop, and we're going to work on the arches for a while. I'll work on some wiring and stuff. It's nice and cool in there. And then tomorrow we'll come out and get these things finished. Well, I've been working in here most of the day. It's starting to go on 7 o'clock. I need to quit. But I wanted to show you what I was working on in here, in here on the arches. We started out, and this, I've been working on the exit, but this is the back of the entrance sign which I haven't done yet and last time we were down here we got all the sockets glued in but I hadn't done any of the wiring connections or anything yet 
I just finished all the connections on the back of the exit and I got the power cord attached on and it's just basically going through and making a connection all the way through and I looped it around. There's 25 sockets on the exit, 25 on the entrance. And it took a while to solder all that up, but this is done. My next step is I gotta get the lights in there and make sure everything works. And I think if I have a few that don't work, I need to mess around with my connections and see. But technically, everything is put together the way it should, so it should work. And there you go, all lit up. Now the bulbs on here, I bought from a site on eBay that handles C9 sockets. A lot of it was uh, Christmas light bulbs. These are actually an LED bulb, so they won't get hot. They'll use a lot less power, even though they're running off of 110. But there's that one. Finished, at least with this stage. We got the pillars done. And I went, in the original design, I did black for the lettering. This time we did silver and it does make it a little pop a little bit better. Uh, trying to get you a, a view of them here. I can see the top half. And then we can go down below and you can see the bottom half. But anyway, this part of the project is done. Uh, the rest of the work, like I showed you last night, is going to be on the arches and the uh, skeletons that go up on top of the pillars. The uh, exit arch is done. i got to do the inter, inter arch next, and then we'll be working on the skeletons. Oh, one other side project. I even went and painted these. These are the uh, brackets that sit at the top and the bottom of the pillars that the gates mount on. I never painted them the first, uh, in the first rendition. This time I figured I'd paint them. It's a small detail. I doubt people are really even going to notice them. But what the hell? Details. And there you go. Entrance is finished. That means I've got exit and entrance finished. Sorry, can't get back far enough from the dead on. <laughs> But it looks a lot nicer in person than it does on camera. The colors are a little off. Now here is our last project for the pillar pillars I've got to do. And these are the skeletons that sit up on top of the pillars. Uh, each of them has LEDs in the eyes. I'm not changing that. The eyes are just fine. But it's these here, the puck lights, or uh, the uh, lanterns, uh, they run off of 5 volt. I want to fix these up so they're running on 12 volt, which means installing a puck light. Now, I'm going to do uh, my flickering yellow pucks in here, you know, to get that flickering effect of the flames. And the reason why, I, another reason why I want to do it is not only to give them 12 volt, but the candlelight, uh, the 5 volt lights that are in there are very, very weak. And, you know, even at night it has to get pretty dark out before you see the, uh, uh, the flicker. So I was thinking if I installed a puck light in there, it might help brighten it up a little bit. Even though the flickering yellows are a little dimmer than the uh, standard colors. They're still brighter than these 5, five, uh, five volt ones that are in here. So, what I am going to do is I'm going to have to dismantle the bottom of it, take the candle out, snip the wiring, and then play around with the puck lights and see whether I want to install them in the base of the whole candle glows, or do I want them up on, you know, mounted halfway up, or what. I gotta make that, I can't make that decision until I get them taken apart. Well, there you go. The ones for the entrance are done, and the candles are showing up really good. So, that will help out. That will help out for uh, early evening. Before, with the other lights in there, they weren't really showing up as well as they should. And you'll notice the eyes on them are green. 
That means they go for the entrance. Now I need to re repeat the process with these two. And both of these two should have, if I remember right, red LEDs. They go on the exit arch. Okay, the exit ones are done. And I do like the uh, the new lanterns. The lights, the puck lights made a big difference over the little 5 watt LED bulbs they had in. But they're all wired up, ready to go. Sitting here plugging right along and got the thing. I better grab the camera, show you the last little bit of the setup. Uh, I've got two of the pillars out here right now and these are the exit pillars and I'm working on uh, doing the attachment for the uh, arch that goes over the top and it's just a piece of a uh, metal conduit three-quarter inch metal piping with two straps on it and then what I'll do is I'll set the arch up here and I'll do the same type of strapping on the back that will hold the arch up into place now I ran into a problem here on the platform for the skellies originally the old arch just sat right here and I had a notch cut out and I've got the piping in a different place now so I ended up having to re-notch the skeletons as well and that's currently what I'm kind of working on now with that, all the other thing I've got to do is attach the arch. And I'm not going to show you the arch up there until the very end. Uh, normally with a project like this, I'll do a daytime and a nighttime view. That way you can see it during the day and then see it with its lights on. Which is a two day process. Uh, I basically film it, during, set them both up, film it, the reveal video, during the day and then come out here about 10 o'clock when it's nice and dark plug them in you know turn power on you get your nighttime view and then the next day tear it all down get it all put away that's normally what I do unfortunately for me today is Thursday tomorrow morning extremely early we get on the road so I would not be able to get these torn down before we hit the road for work and I cannot leave these up in their current location overnight or not overnight but for several days while we're out of town we've been getting some winds here in the evening and I'm afraid they'll blow over and there'll be no one here to pick up the pieces so what we're going to end up doing is at the end of this vlog you'll get a look at both the exit and the entrance arch during the day and uh, you'll get a look at them that way as far as a nighttime view you're going to have to watch setup vlogs for the haunt this year. When I get them installed, I'll give you guys a nighttime look at them once they're installed in the haunt. And that will be part of one of the setups. So make sure uh, you kind of follow along <laughs> uh, on the setup vlogs if you want to see these. And you'll see them too when I do the walkthrough video for the haunt. So. But uh, anyway... With that, I'm going to back on out of here and call it quits on this vlog. Uh, you'll have one more, uh, two more quick clips of the uh, entrance and the exit here. I'll put on after closing and so you can see what they look like. Uh, I would also like to thank everyone who's following me on Instagram right now. Uh, I've been posting uh, sneak peeks at different stages of the project for the last month uh, on Instagram. And see, that's the nice thing about being a follower on Instagram. You get sneak peeks to the project before the vlogs come out. <laughs> anyway, guys, stay spooky. Stay toxic.